Hello everybody. Today I want to show um, an all black black or green one deck. Now I put this deck together um, and I've been trying it out a few times and I think I've gotten it to a point where it's okay, but I'll say that without the white cards such as X Body and Cool Boy, uh, this deck does have a pretty big glaring set of weaknesses that we try to remedy but honestly, they're a little difficult. And so this deck is constructed to kind of like fit in with the Ultimate Cup rules of like every card needs to be one color. Um, and of course, the banned cards, none of them, I think, are in here. Um, so let's get on with the deck. So first, um, one of the big weaknesses is that this deck doesn't have a lot of DP. That comes a lot with the red cards that are in, usually in Black War Greymon. Uh, so we have to start dealing with that at the baby level. So we do have the plus 10k uh, on the babies. If you have reboot, a lot of the higher end cards do have reboot. Um, and we try to add uh, some toy Agumons later uh, that can give your Digimon reboot, but definitely a lot of reboot at the top end that can uh, get these this 1000 off of the, the Kapurimon, which is pretty, pretty okay. I also argue about whether we should include we should we should be going with Pagumon because your Digimon do get dealt. They don't have that protection tech usually, um, and so if you have that this on the leasing effect, usually it's pretty good to draw a card that you might need because you do need that draw power. You need to grab your pieces, just like in every Black World Greymon deck. And this deck is does get slowed down by the fact that there's no Cool Boy that drops for two and searches for your pieces. Uh, we also go of course four of the Black Agumon Searcher. This card is really good. It drops for three. And it reveals four cards, and you can add two cards, one Greymon and one Dragonkin. So you can add your War Greymon, and you can add any other Greymon that you might need. This card is, uh, in in this deck, is absolutely essential. You run four of. Uh, no arguments about that whatsoever. Next, we do run four Tapermon. This is the other card that also starts dealing with uh, the DP. It gives all of your two-color Digimon plus a thousand. On the high on the high end, on your once you're at the ultimate and mega level, you will have two color Digimon. Essentially, all that's all you run. So this one thousand on every turn is actually pretty good. Plus, uh, we do run Maki in this deck, so this is a pretty good target that you can also pick up if you put put the Maki down. Maki looks specifically for Tapermon. I, right now, I have one Toy Agumon. I do consider running more, and I have tested out with more Toy Agumons. In fact, you could probably use uh, sub in more Toy Agumons. But there is Reboot as well on the Black White Greymon X and the Gaiamons that we run in this deck. So you don't necessarily need to have this Reboot, but it is fun to have Reboot and um, jamming combo from the Greymon uh, swinging to your opponent and then rebooting and they, they can't do anything about it. You just hit you just hit them with a jamming kind of early on. It's pretty cool. So I would I like Toy Agumon. Um I'm running one right now, but honestly you could probably you could probably pump that up a little bit if you want. But again there's reboot in your top end already. Uh, unless you want to run more blackboard green mons. I run three two mons. Uh, as far as Ultimate Cup goes, there is a lot of uh, memory gaining, especially specifically with Bloom Lord. Two mon actually kinda helps you deal with that. Of course uh, if you put one out there, uh, they might suspend it and swing into it. But, you know, if you put a couple two mons down, it makes uh, players who play Bloom Lord or things like that uh, have a difficult time with two mons. So I like playing two mon. Um, of course, if you if you have three, you can just, if you see it, you can digivolve on top of your egg with it and not worry about it. Um, but it is there to choke your opponent with DP. Um and that is exactly what it will do. We run four of the black uh, inherited blocker Greymon. It does it does the evolve for two. It is black, of course. It meets our rules requirements. Um, and I wish we had more DP increase, but we simply don't. So we also run one of the Greymons that, if you have reboot, gains jamming. So if you do have one of the weaker black or Greymons, uh, you know there are some strong Digimons still. Mostly things that are like 13k. Uh, if they have a boost, you know, they might go up even stronger. And uh, if you don't have your DP increase, uh, your Tapermon or, and or your Kapurimon, then having jamming is also not a bad option. So I, re I definitely run that. And so we run five Greymons, on top of which you can go into your Greymon X Antibody, which obviously you can't use the Inherit effect. There's no X Antibody option in the Ultimate Cup rules. Uh, but by itself, these Digivolving for zero on top of your Greymon, getting you a draw, 
uh, as well as reducing the cost to your level fours is such a, is still such a good ability on its own that you do still need to run this uh, Green Mon X. So whether your build is black or red, four of these is still a must, even though you don't have the protection with the X and the body under. It's just too good. You get a free Digivolution if you have a Grey Mon, and you get to reduce the cost of your uh, Metal Grey Mons or level fives uh, with this card. It's too good, You you even without that. The other ability by itself is also broken, but we do have to run that Grey Mon X. And then Metal Greymon X Antibody is one of our uh, guys that we need to go into. If it digivolves from a Metal Greymon, which we do have, of course, it can pop something that's 6k and it can't be de digivolved and it can't be uh, DP reduced. And the Inherit is pretty nice too. It, um, when something stands up on your opponent's turn, you can just trash your opponent's security, which is pretty good. Pretty good. Um, you have reboot, then that also counts. That's a, that's a one of your Digimon. It just says a Digimon. It doesn't have to be your opponent's Digimon. You can reboot and trash your opponent's security uh, with this Metal Greymon, which is awesome. You also run four of the Metal Greymon from BT8. This Metal Greymon is just really good. It digivolves your opponent and pops something for 3,000, as well as gives you the ability to attack into standing Digimon. Sometimes if you have this combo and you have a black or green one on top you can attack your opponent's digimon uh be suspended reboot and then trash your opponent's uh card with the metal green one ability and that's just incredible you can just um keep your opponent ha from having digimons and work their security without having to interact with it you don't activate them if they trash and let next one door Greymon, that's all you are allowed to do. This does not count as a Greymon, but the reason we're including it is because if your Digimon has X and a body in its traits, meaning black or gray X, for example, uh, it, it does get checked plus one. And when Digivolving, if you have a black card with X and a body in its traits, uh, you can in your hand, you can put it as a bottom Digivolution, and you can keep your opponent from DP reducing or uh, deleting, which is actually pretty good. It's almost like a form of protection, a temporary protection. And you could take Metal Grey X if you don't have it in your stack. Uh, you could put Metal Grey X under and then get that inherited ability of sec check plus one as well as your trash your opponent. Makes the work on your opponent very, very good. It also digivolves for three if you don't have the four to digivolve. You don't want to, you have three and you don't want to pass turn. You might need to protect yourself with something like this because that's the other big weakness of this deck is that it doesn't have protection. Uh, that the X and a body offers, right? This Greymon's X and a body protection is against bouncing uh, or deleted by effects. Um, you, 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 if you're playing players who know what they're doing, they know not to let your stack stand there. They do not want you to have that stack. They do not want you to um, build up, and so they will get rid of it as fast as they can. And without protection, you have to find small ways to do that. Then we also run, of course, three Black War Greymon. This Black War Greymon pops Tamers uh, because you can't use Omnimon Schwartz Defeat. Uh, and really the only other card that interacts with Tamers is Lucimon in a purple deck. I don't really like to play purple, so I will run Black War Greymons in order to run uh, over the Tamers, right? You can kill a few small Tamers with this Black War Greymon uh, up to a play cost, com a combined play cost of six. You can pop uh, one big tamer or a couple small tamers with it at the very least and on top of that if you do have the toy agumon uh, in the stack you could actually swing into your opponent uh you can stand up if you destroy a digimon right if you have the metal greymon of course uh you can swing again kill a second digimon you can you'll have reboot from the toy agumon you'll trash your opponent and then you'll if you have the blocking greymon you also have a blocker that's inc and it can block twice this black war greymon with this combo is actually pretty insane if you can pull it off. The problem is this Black War Greymon does not have the protection that you would want, but neither do any of the cards, if we're being completely honest. None, without the X antibody, we can, we simply cannot protect the cards that, as often as we want. We can't have a all turns protection the way that we want. We also run two X antibody, uh, Black War Greymon X antibody, and this is actually pretty nice protection as well. It doesn't... Um, pop tamers but if you can go off of your black war greymon for it it's only for two and it is a rebooter just naturally and if it does reboot your opponent's uh lowest dp digimon gets destroyed so you can actually um just reboot and get and wipe the board 
of your opponent. Trash their card if you have Metal Greymon X under it. Uh, and you can defer an attack into this Black War Greymon X, which could be uh, beefed up to 14 if you have Tapermon under it, for example. Tapermon is all turns, so you could have a 14k um, Digimon on the field with that. Next, I do run two Gaios. Uh, I was only running one, but honestly, the fact that it has Blitz is actually huge because you cannot Digivolve uh, and attack into this X Anabody Black War Greymon X like the way you would do it in regular deck because you don't have the X Anabody. You just can't do it. So you often enough, I'm forced to go into Gaiamon, string into his, an opponent's Digimon to get rid of it or Digivolve, D-Digivolve or security check. Uh, the Blitz allows me to uh, attack while not passing turn. So often what will happen is because you don't have the X on a body uh, if, and you want to go into one of these guys, you'll just Digivolve and not get an attack off, right? Or don't, they won't be suspended. They won't get their things off if you don't have the correct stack under it, especially, right? Um, so Gaiamon's Blitz is actually pretty huge here. It helps you get rid of uh, some of the stronger Digimon and it can beef up to 15k or so if needed, or uh, it could have the jamming from the Greymon, which is pretty solid as well, right? Next, we run two Yuya's. Uh, Yuya's boost is only temporary. You can tap it when you Digimon into a Greymon to gain 2k, and you could also, uh, if you Digimon into the same level, you can tap it and not be affected by options. That's pretty good. I, I hate the fact that it's only temporary, but if you can time it right, Yuya actually pr works uh, pretty well to protect your cards here. And we have more protection coming up, uh, but Yuya is actually one pretty good level of protection. It is a memory tamer. So is Tai, which is another one of the cards that we run in this deck. Tai just gives you plus a thousand on uh, your opponent's turn. So you have blockers, you have stronger Digimon that your opponent needs to deal with. That can be key. Uh, I only run one, but uh, honestly, I can see I can see people running more black ties, maybe even for the Yuya's. The good thing is Yuya just gives you plus two thousand until the end of your opponent's turn. So you do have a temporary stronger buff that you would need two black ties for plus you get that additional uh, protection from security options right or even or just options in regular uh so black tie solid i like it um and you kind of do need to run um more memory tamers because uh you're gonna get choked a lot right this this without the x on the body without the swinging without any of that you do have to use a lot of memory to pull off your stuff and that's where maki comes in maki is actually Almost like a mini Cool Boy, but not as powerful. This actually is crazy. It shows how strong Cool Boy really is. Uh, Maki drops for three. Cool Boy drops for two. Maki looks up two cards. One of them can be a Tapermon, and the other one is a two-color black card. So you can potentially pull up a Rookie, and you can pull up any of your combo pieces that are two colors. Not uh, not Dora Greymon, but you can pull up Black War Greymon. You can put up Metal Greymon or your Greymon here. On top of that... You can, uh, on your turn, you can suspend this to Digivolve for cheaper on a two-color uh, black Digimon. That includes this Greymon. So one of the things that I hate is having to go for three into this Greymon uh, X antibody. Um, but if you tap Mackie, you can reduce it and make it a two. So you could potentially go for two into this Greymon and then for two into Metal Greymon on top of that. Um, and not necessarily have to pass turn if you have the memory for it, right? And if you have more than one Maki, obviously that's even better. Uh, so these cards look for pieces and they reduce the price of your Digivolution uh, from level four and up. So this is, it's funny because this is for three, solid, like it. Cool Boy does even more than that. Cool Boy looks for X on the body, specifically drops for two and gives you uh, a draw as well as gaining memory instead of a reduction, which in my, in my opinion is better. So Cool Boy is just such a broken card compared to Maki, but Maki... Again, it's like the mini cool boy role in this deck. Searching and reducing the price is pretty good. Uh, this right here, I want <laughs> this right here is just supposed to be a black memory boost. I just happen to not have one, uh, but you definitely want to run memory boost. I would even say that you could make an argument for four memory boosts. You definitely want to make sure that you pick up your pieces and that you have the memory. But uh, I will also mention that a lot of people will have your memory chokers, right? Whether it's Chumon or uh, Madoki Betamon, I expect to see a lot of those cards come out. Um, I'm running three black memory boosts, but again, I can make, I could see somebody making an argument for four of them. And since you will probably pop, you know, those little small dudes anyway, um, you could probably run four. I'd say I run four. I would run four, but I can't even run three. I don't have three. Um, I think four is very much one of the changes that I would make. I think running four is the right call 
in this situation. Uh, next, two Breath of the Gods. This card protects your stack, right? If your stack is out there and kind of exposed, you can uh, reboot it and or uh, protect it from being DP reduced. You can't, uh, you can um, just kind of protect it. You can't return it to your opponent's hand, right? The only thing is they can still suspend you, which is what Bloom Lord does, especially with, specifically with Hydromon. So you still, you, Hydromon's still going to be a headache with this. Uh, but they, fortunately, they still, they cannot uh, bottom deck you or send you back to hand, right? The way that um, Alt Force Vigramon and Bloom Lord Mon do, Breath of the Gods kind of puts uh, a good deal down. And if they hit it into security, well, th that stalls them for a turn because they can no longer swing into your security after they hit a Breath of the Gods in security. I would, inc I would even say that you could probably consider running three Breath of the Gods um, just to protect yourself a little bit more. Uh, but two is right for me. I think two Breath of the Gods is fine. Um, and of course, our two options that deal with things. We run one Ultimate Flare and one Digi Dimension. Um, these are honestly kind of similar. Digi Dimension uh, can play for seven if you have a Tamer, which is fine. And it de-digivolves one on three of your opponents, but it can only wipe three different things that play cost up to, up, up to six. So um, the digivolution is only one, but it is more widespread, and the play cost that it targets is higher than Ultimate Flare. But Ultimate Flare can deal with one stack, bring it all the way down, and then wipe everything that's play cost three or less. Ultimate Flare is pretty good for both all fours. Uh, it'll de-digivolve multiple times. And Bloom Lord, wipe the board. There's a lot of uh, 3,000 DP or play cost three or less in Bloom Lord. So this works with that pretty well. DJ Dimension is with if it's more if your opponent has already kind of built up quite a bit, right? You can um, DJ Evolve uh, maybe Blue Flares, right? This is more for a Blue Flare player against the Blue Flare. Uh, you could DJ Evolve the Metal Greymon and then wipe anything that's play cost six or less, so on and so forth, right? Um, I will also mention that Hades Force is a card that you should absolutely consider. The problem with Hades Force, in my opinion, specifically in this situation, is that um, your opponent will definitely not let you keep your Black World Greymon out there, right? And you can't, you almost can't maintain your turn and then use Hades Force. Um, you can't, you can't go into Black War and Black X and or Gaiamon in the same turn and then use Hades Force. That's not. Usually the way it's been working out in testing. Hades Force is, of course, a great card that can help wipe your opponent. The problem is, if your opponent is good, which I assume you want them to be or uh, would run into, they know not to leave your Black War because Hades Force is a potential field wiping threat. And so they would be willing to give up a ton of memory to get rid of them. And because they don't have the protection, they will absolutely uh, do that. And then Hades Force just gets stuck in your hand. On top of that, uh, you don't have the X antibody in your Digivolution cards, so this will always cost seven. There's no way this costing, this is costing five in this format. Uh, if the, if the rules were different, of course, that would that would be um, what the adjustment that you would make. But of course, Hades were dropping for seven every single time. Uh, no protection on your on your top Digimon means that Hades Force will probably not wipe the board uh, because you may maybe you'll have a Metal Greymon, maybe you'll have a Greymon and be forced to use Hades Force at that point, um, and maybe not do as big of a white. And then when Black War Greymon and or Black War Greymon X come out, they're just not as protected. And I think that's kind of the weakness, one of the bigger weaknesses with this, with the black build is that it just does not have protection nor the DP to deal with that. And so I would say that you probably don't want to take this into Ulti Cup as it is. But if you want to maybe start with this base, I think I can see that happening. I think there's a few changes that could be made to make this better. Uh, but overall, it just has a lot of holes in it. Well, anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.